assalamu alaikum class today we are going to start the velocity triangle of a steam turbine um, in previous lab uh, we have already done the rankine cycle and uh, you have already uh, done the analysis of a thermal power plant which was working on a rankine cycle and uh, in that case you have already analyzed the parameters of a rankine cycle uh, today in detail we are going to analyze the velocity triangle of a steam turbine uh, so uh, one by one i will tell you about the velocity triangle of a steam turbine uh, the objective of our lab is to understand the inlet and outlet velocity triangle of a steam turbine and then you have to plot the velocity triangle of a steam turbine in matlab Uh, so in this lab the basic understanding of uh, a steam turbine is very important which we have already done in the previous lab and then you have to understand the velocity triangle of steam turbine and its working so what is steam turbine you already know the steam turbine is one kind of heat engine machine in which the steam heat energy is converted to mechanical work it consists of a rotor and set of rotating blades which are attached to a shaft and then the shaft is placed in the middle of the rotor and electric generator which is known as a steam turbine generator is connected to the rotor shaft and the turbine generator collects the mechanical energy from the shaft and convert it into electrical energy so so students you have already seen in the rankine cycle that uh, the source of fuel may be different it can be coal fired power plant it can be a nuclear based plant but uh, the output of the boiler is steam so this steam is um, the outlet of uh, of a boiler and then this steam is given to your turbine which is mechanical cup coupled with the generator to produce the electrical power and this steam in is then uh, condensed back uh, through the condenser and liquid water is then sent back to the boiler which is the closed loop cycle and a thermodynamic based cycle is a rankine cycle so here we will study the velocity triangle that how the steam is coming out of the nozzle and at which angle this steam should hit the blade uh, and which with, with with which velocity uh, to get the maximum efficiency of a steam turbine so what is the working principle of uh, this uh, steam turbine Uh, you already know that a high velocity steam is coming out from the nozzle and then it strikes the rotating blades which are fitted on a disc mounted on a shaft and this high velocity steam produces dynamic pressure on the blade in which blades and shaft both start to rotate in the same direction and the conversion of kinetic energy does mechanical work to the rotor blades and rotor is connected to a steam turbine generator which acts as a mediator and the turbine generator collects mechanical energy from the rotor and then converts it into electrical energy so this is the basic working principle in this lab you must know about the uh, categories of uh, steam turbine in which uh, it is basically divided in two categories that is the impulse turbine and reaction steam turbine so you must know about the major difference between the impulse turbine and the reaction turbine so in the impulse type steam turbine the steam expands in the nozzle and its pressure doesn't change as it move over the blade and whereas in the reaction type the steam expands continuously 
as it passes over the blades and thus there is a gradual fall in pressure during the expansion so this is the major difference between impulse and reaction based turbine and the example of impulse steam turbine is a pelton wheel banky turbine whereas uh, the francis and kaplan propeller turbine are the uh, examples of a reaction steam turbine coming about towards the difference between the impulse and reaction turbine so the basic difference between the impulse and reaction turbine has already been studied in the previous slide so there are many differences between impulse and reaction turbine you can see here that in an impulse turbine the steam flows to the nozzle first and then it strikes the moving blade whereas in a reaction turbine steam flows through the guided mechanism first and then through the moving blades number 2 blades rotate only by impact force whereas in reaction turbine the blade rotate by impact force and reaction generated by steam expansion relative fluid velocity remain constant across the blades whereas in reaction turbine the relative fluid velocity increases across the blade and the number of stages is less for impulse steam turbine for the same heat input whereas in reaction turbine it has more stages under same heat supply it is uh, the impulse turbine has more efficiency as compared to the reaction turbine whereas the the less maintenance requirement is uh, in impulse turbine and reaction turbine has more maintenance requirements uh, casing doesn't perform any hydraulic function uh, and it is only used to prevent fluid splashing in case of impulse turbine and in case of reaction turbine the casing is must to contain the pressure fluid fluid uh, is fluid flow is tangential to turbine wheel whereas in reaction turbine the fluid flow is radial or axial to turbine wheel it is suitable for power small power generation and high speed operating and it has high operating speed in case of impulse turbine whereas the reaction turbine has low operating speed uh, with the uh, high power generation requirements so this was all about the difference between the impulse turbine and reaction turbine so students now coming towards the velocity triangle of an impulse turbine so what is the velocity triangle of impulse turbine we will do it step by step first uh, you can see here that v1 is the absolute velocity with which the steam is coming out of the nozzle and it is hitting the blade with an angle alpha which is basically the nozzle angle with which the steam is coming out of the nozzle and it is hitting the blade with absolute velocity v1 and vb is the linear velocity of a moving blade now what happened that this absolute velocity v1 is divided into two components horizontal component and vertical component so the horizontal component is basically the wheel velocity the component of the velocity of a steam in horizontal direction whereas the flow velocity is the component of the velocity of the jet v1 in vertical direction so basically the wheel velocity plays an important role for the movement of the uh, blade velocity vb and uh, uh, this is the basic component for the which is responsible for the motion of blade and the vertical component vf 
you can see here is the flow velocity which is basically uh, describing the flow of velocity uh, at the inlet so here you can see that all velocities are denoted with the suffix one which is uh, representing the inlet velocity so after that you can see here another component of the velocity which is v r 1 you can say here v r 1 so what is v r 1 v r 1 is the relative velocity of steam at inlet you can see here that when steam is coming out of the nozzle with velocity v1 and hitting the blade uh, with velocity v1 uh, as a result the blade start rotating with velocity vb so this relative velocity vr1 is obtained by subtracting the relative velocity of the blade from the absolute velocity you will get vr1 so this vr1 is making an angle theta and this theta angle is the angle between the relative velocity and the direction of motion of the blade at inlet okay so here we have represented this uh, direction of motion of blade vb at the inlet now what happens after hitting the blade the sum of the steam flow out of the blade and it is having the velocity relative velocity vr which is making an angle phi and this phi is the blade angle at the outlet and this angle is uh, uh, this relative velocity at outlet is making an angle phi with the blade velocity vb again you can see here that we will make exactly the same triangle which we have already made at inlet now we will made the components of velocity at outlet so you can see here that v2 is the blade velocity with which that is the absolute velocity uh, of steam at outlet and this v2 will again have two components that is wheel velocity at outlet and the flow velocity at outlet and they are angle uh, making an angle this absolute velocity is making an angle of beta and this beta angle is the angle of discharge of the exit steam with tangential to the wheel now student in the previous slide you have seen that we have made the inlet velocity triangle as well as we have made the outlet velocity triangle now what we have to do we have to make a combined velocity triangle so how to make the combined velocity triangle is very important so after understanding the inlet and outlet velocity triangle you can easily uh, make the combined velocity triangle and that can be made in the next slide so you can see here in that the both inlet and outlet or exact exit exit velocity triangle have the common vector that is vb vb is the common vector so these two can be combined in the single diagram for the sake of convenience in solving the problems and assuming there is no frictional loss at the blade relative velocity of steam while gliding over its surface will remain constant so we will assume that this relative velocity vr1 is equal to the relative velocity at exit so student if you flip this triangle 
here you can see that the common VB component can be uh, rotated here and you will get two triangles that is inlet velocity triangle and the outlet velocity triangle. So this is the combined velocity triangle. Uh, this is the inlet and this one is the outlet velocity triangle. Now students, uh, in order to um, consider the effect of blade friction on velocity triangle, we have initially assumed that the relative velocity at inlet is equal to relative velocity at outlet by assuming that blades are smooth but in actual the blades are rough and this relative velocity vr2 is less than vr1 so vr2 is equal to k times that is the blade velocity coefficient into vr1 so you can see here that k is equal to relative velocity at exit vr2 over to the ratio that is relative velocity at inlet vr1 and the value of k normally lies between 0.85 to 0.9. Now what is the power developed by the steam turbine? So you can find the power developed by the steam turbine by using the Newton's second law of motion and according to Newton's second law of motion, the direction of force in the blade can be found by multiplying the mass of steam flowing per second with change in velocity of drill. So we will multiply the mass of steam flowing per second with the change in velocity of drill Vw1 uh, and Vw2. So you will get the mass of steam flowing per second where m is the mass of steam flowing through the turbine and Vw1 plus Vw2 gives you the change in rail velocity. So after finding that now we will find the power produced by turbine that can be found by multiplying the force with the velocity uh, of the turbine with which it is moving you will get the power delivered by steam turbine. So here you can see that this mv1 w1 plus vw2 is basically the force which we have already calculated in the previous slide and now we will multiply it with the velocity of the blade with which it is rotating. So you will get the power produced by the turbine and if you find the axial thrust on the wheel then you can find this axial thrust by uh, multiplying the mass of steam flowing per second with change in flow velocity you will get the axial thrust okay student i hope you understand the velocity triangle and how to find the power developed by the steam turbine. Now coming towards our uh, numerical. So uh, in numerical uh, that is our uh, lab 5. Uh, we will go towards our uh, lab 5 and you will see here the task 1. So what is the task 1? In task 1, you have to find the or you have to draw the combined velocity triangle in MATLAB and the following data is given that is the steam is coming out from the nozzle with velocity V, the nozzle angle is 20 degrees and the mean blade velocity is 400 meter per second and the mass of steam flowing per hour is 1000 kilogram and the blade coefficient is 0.8. So now we will write this code in MATLAB you will uh, define the velocity with which 
the which is the steam uh, that is coming out of the nozzle with velocity 1200 so i have defined v1 as 1200 and the angle is 20 degree this alpha angle is 20 degree then we have the blade velocity with which this blade is rotating is 400 mass is given a thousand and the blade coefficient k is 0.8 so you can see here that we will find this vf1 component which is basically the sine component of this absolute velocity so we will will multiply this with the sine of alpha then we will find the horizontal component vw1 by multiplying v1 with the cosine of alpha then what is this bw1 this bw1 can be computed uh, by subtracting vw1 from uh, vb uh, by subtracting vb from vw1 you will uh, find this value bw1 this blue line is bw1 then how will you find the relative velocity this vr1 can be found by this triangle and uh, by using the Pythagoras theorem you can find Vf1 square plus this Bw1 square and square root you will get the relative velocity Vr1 then uh, you have to find the value of this theta so theta will be tan inverse of Vf1 over Bw1 so I have computed by using these two lines I have computed this theta and then for the outlet velocity triangle beta will be equal to theta and phi will be equal to alpha. So students after defining this now we will find Vr2 so here we have a coefficient k so we will multiply the blade coefficient with the relative velocity vr1 so you will get the relative velocity vr2 after that you will find the flow velocity so vf2 will be the can we can get vf2 by multi, multiplying the relative velocity with the sine component sine of phi so sine of phi will give uh, multiplying with, with the relative velocity you will get the flow velocity at the output then you will get the drill velocity by uh, multiplying the tan beta with uh, this vf2 okay in order to compute the combined velocity triangle uh, i have sh already shown you this combined velocity triangle so we have to define this x and y axis so first from starting from the origin when x axis is 0 y is also 0 obviously starting from the origin then we have uh, this common factor common velocity that is blade velocity vb at that point uh, x axis we have vb but y axis is 0 at this point after that we will define the real uh, this bw1 component uh, and it will be opposite because we have drawn it after inverting so this triangle so we will define it as minus bw1 and at this point the uh, y component is not zero it is vf1 again coming towards origin you will define the origin and then you will define this vw2 component that is wheel velocity at 2 and at this point the y axis is vf2 and then we will define the vb uh, this common uh, blade velocity vb and at that point again y axis is 0 then by using the plot command you will plot the combined velocity triangle so students here you can also find the force force will be mass into the change in 
real velocity and power can be find by multiplying the force with the blade velocity and you can also find the efficiency uh, which is uh, asked in task 2 that is efficiency will be 2p over m v1 square so by using this code you can find the efficiency of a turbine so here in task 2 you can find the blade efficiency and power by using this code so students uh, now what is your task you have to find that at which angle uh, alpha at which angle alpha the power produced by turbine is maximum and we have maximum efficiency so by changing the value of alpha that is the, st the steam the angle at which the steam is coming out of the nozzle you have to find the maximum efficiency uh, which is achieved at which angle so uh, kindly do this task and write your code in your manual and submit this task in the next class so students you can see here in matlab i have written exactly the same code and after executing this code you can find all the parameters here the efficiency is 60 percent and here i have constructed the combined velocity triangle by using the code which i have already explained step by step in the slides and you can see here that we have find the efficiency real velocity relative velocity flow velocity so each component of the velocity triangle is find out and we have plot the combined velocity triangle as well as we have computed the other parameters which are involved in finding the combined velocity triangle i hope you understand this lecture Thank you. I love this.